from Florida's new governor, Ron DeSantis, outlined just some of his priorities. Thank you for joining us. I'm Felicia Rodriguez. And I'm Tiffany Kenny. We have live team coverage. Our Ron Burke has reaction from a local environmental advocate. But first, we go to our co-anchor, Todd McDermott, who is live in Tallahassee, and he was there as the new administration was sworn in. Todd? Well, Tiffany Felicia, the November election was emotional, divisive, and recount close. But this inauguration today is supposed to be the ceremonial signal that the party politicking is over. That, of course, is probably pie in the sky. But Governor Ron DeSantis indicated today that he is focused on getting down to running the job of running this state. The pageantry, music, and tradition of an inauguration all signal the transition to new leadership. But just as loud a message was sent by what didn't follow Governor Ron DeSantis' taking the oath of office. No parade for a man getting right down to business. I will lead with purpose and conviction on behalf of the people of Florida. If the legislature engages in wasteful spending, I will veto it. If local official is neglectful of required duties, I will remove that official. If our environment is threatened, I will move to protect it. All the traditional conservative Republican touchstones were in his address on taxes. Let's promote a virtuous cycle whereby low taxes, a reasonable regulatory climate, a sensible legal system and a healthy environment attract jobs, businesses and investment. On school vouchers. One size does not fit all. No family should be denied the opportunity for their child to succeed due to insufficient income or to living in the wrong zip code. And on judges who seek to reshape the law. Judicial activism ends right here and right now. The new governor also asked for an end to political tribalism, promised to clean and protect our waters, and vowed a full rebuilding of communities crippled by Hurricane Michael. His goal, above all, leave Florida better than he found it. But now falls to me to build upon the foundation that has been laid to navigate the challenges, economic, environmental, and constitutional that lie ahead and to steer Florida to a stronger, cleaner, and safer future. The governor has appointed two Democrats to his team this time around. I've also worked with the Agriculture Commissioner, Nikki Freed, who's a Democrat as well. The war begins tomorrow with, we believe, at least one nomination of a new member of the state Supreme Court. He'll have two other nominations to make, and you heard that talk about removing officials. It is expected, uh, we have been told, that Scott Israel, the Broward Sheriff, will be removed, suspended from his position for perceived failings in the response to the fatal shooting at Marjorie Stone Douglas High School that took 17 lives. Sheriff Israel, for his part, has already indicated that he will hire a lawyer to try to keep and win back his job. Now, of course, Ron DeSantis, not the only person who was sworn in today, just before Ron DeSantis became the 46th governor. Jeanette Nunez was also sworn in as Florida's first Hispanic woman as lieutenant governor. Nunez is a former health care executive and state legislator. She is also the first Hispanic woman to serve as speaker pro tem. Also, she's expected to use her previous experience to be much more than a ceremonial player in the DeSantis administration as well. Former Governor Rick Scott was also in attendance today to see his successor be sworn in. Directly after the address, though, Mr. Scott left to be sworn in Washington, D.C. as the next senator from the state of Florida. Of course, he succeeds Bill Nelson, who served three terms as Florida senator. We now tonight have a new governor and a new senator. The Florida Democratic Party did honor newly sworn in Commissioner of Ag Nikki Freed earlier today at a luncheon. Freed makes history as the first Jewish woman to join the cabinet in the state of Florida. She was sworn in using the University of Florida's copy of the first Hebrew language Bible published in the United States. Now, much has been made of Ron DeSantis' environmental record. As a congressman, he did not seem to have a great interest in water resources in the state. As a candidate, he did, and you heard him mention it time and again in his speech today. Ron Burke is covering that part of this story about Ron DeSantis' plans for the future live in Stewart. Ron? Todd, I watched the inauguration with environmental advocate Jackie Thurlow Lippish, who played a leading role in getting offshore drilling banned in Florida back in November. Now, clean water, of course, remains a paramount issue. And she watched very closely and listened intently today 
as Ron DeSantis went on the clock for the first time and addressed the environment as governor. I've been a politician myself. I know how when you say something like that, you know, you better know that you're going to have to keep those words. And now I'm feeling super excited because they said them all over again today. Jackie Thurlow Lippish is hopeful the encouraging words Ron DeSantis continues to use regarding Florida's algae crisis will lead to meaningful action. For months, the longtime environmental advocate and former mayor of Sewell's Point has kept notes on the promises the new governor has made. So far, she says he's been consistent. Her research includes flyovers of bodies of water turned green by discharges from Lake Okeechobee. The destruction she's witnessed tells her time is running out to heal Florida. You should be able to go water skiing in the river. You should be able to go fishing in the river and eat the fish. I think that's not asking too much. She met DeSantis during the campaign the day he toured the St. Lucie River to investigate the algae crisis. He impressed her that day, she says, by doing something so simple that is also sometimes so rare. He was a very good listener. He was very attentive. He kept eye contact. Uh, he asked questions uh, intermittently, but was truly interested in what we were saying. And as she listened Tuesday to the newly inaugurated governor, Thurlow Lippish says there's a long overdue generational shift in the air. We will never, ever quit. We won't be cowed, and we won't let the foot draggers stand in our way. With the 40-year-old DeSantis, Florida's youngest governor in more than a century, casting fresh eyes on a decades-old problem. Just kicking the can down the road, knowing the problems for 30 years and not acting on them. Foot draggers. And uh, I think he wants to be a man of action. Now, Third Olympic says if the proper steps are taken, we could see improvements to the algae problem in one to four years. But she says the goal to actually uh, complete the process of perhaps fixing the problem is in the neighborhood of 20 years because it's become such a serious issue over the years and decades. Reporting live in Stewart, Ron Burke. Todd, let's go back to you in Tallahassee. Ron, thank you very much for that important report. One more water story before we leave you here in Tallahassee for now, and that is the fact that while there was no inaugural parade here today on the temporarily named Ron DeSantis Way in front of the old Capitol, the DeSantis family did plan something special in the governor's mansion. They had son Mason baptized today, christened with waters from the Sea of Galilee. That's how they chose to spend the afternoon again. A lot of work to be done. Ron DeSantis appears to be ready to become a very active governor right away, beginning in the morning. For now, I'm Todd McDermott, live in Tallahassee. Only the inaugural ball to go tonight. We'll have more on that at 11. Felicia, Tiffany, back to you. All right, Todd, great job in Tallahassee tonight. Thank you. We